Hello and welcome to module 15 of chemical kinetics and transition state theory. Uh, so today we are going to start a new chapter. Uh, this course essentially focuses on two different theories, kinetic theory of collisions and transition state theory. Uh, we have looked in some detail the kinetic theory of collisions. Uh, what we have also looked into is the limitations of kinetic theory of collisions in the last module. So, today we are going to build over a more popular and more successful theory which is called the transition state theory. Uh, today we will introduce the basic idea of transition state theory and then we will have to take a little detour of statistical mechanics particularly knowing partition functions. Uh, so, let us start. So, the transition state theory came about in 1935. Uh, there was a precursor to transition state theory in 1932 by Wigner, very nice paper, but it had missed a few important factors. In 1935, there were two papers, uh, one by Evans and Poliani, March of 1935, uh, some applications on the transition state method to the calculation of reaction velocities. So, back in that day, reaction velocity is the same as rate constant. And the second one was by Eyring, the activated complex and the absolute rate of chemical reactions. And the absolute rate again means uh, the uh, rate constant. Okay, so, these three people had essentially developed transition state theory. Both the papers uh, developed very similar idea and combined together it is called transition state theory today. And by the way, the formulas written in these papers are still used today. So, uh, in the next several modules, we are going to understand what was developed by in these papers. So, uh, let us look at what is what is the idea, what are we doing? So, remember in kinetic theory of collisions, what is really missing is the idea of chemical bonding, the whole chemistry was missing. So, we want to get that in into the picture okay? and we are essentially going to use the intuition that Arrhenius had provided. So, let us start, let us say I have some reactants going to some products. Okay, the most general reaction. Uh, reactants can be a combination or it can be uh, bimolecular, unimolecular as any number of reactants to any number of products. So, let me just write this in general as R going to P. I do not mean this to be unimolecular when I write R. R can be A plus B, R can be A plus B plus C, yeah, some, some R. And eventually what we want to find is the rate, which if you remember, is defined to be this at constant volume. Please do note that in writing this definition of rate, I am not assuming this step is elementary. This equation holds uh, as long as volume is constant. Okay. Okay. So, uh, this rate is what I want to find and the postulate that transition state theory comes about is the following. I have these uh, reactants and I have these products and we bring in the idea of transition state that Arrhenius was talking about. Okay. And so, I have a transition state in between and uh, the reaction between reactant and transition state is one at equilibrium. So, uh, pictorially the idea is I have, I am drawing a 1D figure because that is easy to draw. I have some uh, coordinate here, call it the reaction coordinate if you will, some potential energy here. Uh, so, this is reactants, this is products and in between since the transition state. Okay. So, that is the main focus of transition state theory, the in between structure. So, what we assume is that initially I am at reactants, okay? so I am initially here and I have an equilibrium with transition state, I am at thermal equilibrium with the transition state. So, reactants can go to transition state, transition state can come back to pro, uh, reactants, but transition state can also fall down to products. And one of the critical assumptions of transition state is that going from transition state to product is one way. So, there is no equilibrium, no back reaction from product to transition state. It is one of the critical assumptions and we are going to discuss these assumptions in great detail later on. 
Okay. So, let us uh, think about this model. I have a k1 here and a k minus 1 here and I have uh, some k2 here and all these steps are assumed to be elementary. So, if I want to find the rate, uh, rate was dp over dt, but I can look at this elementary step transition state going to product uh, dp over dt will be equal to k2 into concentration of transition state. Okay, so, that is how we write rate loss. Uh, you can go back to our very first module where we defined this module 1 or module 2. Okay. So, the next thing we assume is that reactant and transition state are at thermal equilibrium, which means that the forward rate k1 into r. Okay. So, this is r going to transition state this rate is equal to the backwards rate. So, this is forward rate k minus 1 into transition state. So, this is the backward rate. So, at equilibrium which is an assumption. Okay, so, we are making some assumptions to build our theory is equal to this. So, from this I derive transition state concentration equal to k1 over k minus 1 into r and k1 over k minus 1 is what we call as k equilibrium. Okay. k equilibrium is the equilibrium constant of uh, r uh, with uh, transition state. So, my rate uh, is then, so I use this equation here uh, k2 into concentration of transition state which we have found here okay. and so the uh, after doing this basic analysis uh, ma making all these assumptions what we have to do now is estimate uh, k2 and k equilibrium. Okay. So, to calculate this k equilibrium and k2, we require a little bit of statistical mechanics. Without that, we cannot actually calculate this. Uh, and as it turns out, this k equilibrium particularly is related to what is called uh, partition functions. Okay, so, these relations are uh, very fundamental in statistical mechanics. And to understand these relations, we will need to study partition functions. All right. So, that is what we are going to do in today's and uh, next module and perhaps the next one as well is understanding partition functions. So, that we can calculate this k equilibrium. Okay, so, this uh, uh, partition functions you can read in the Atkins book. I have provided you this uh, particular uh, edition 10th edition chapter 15 b. You have any other edition please do not worry. Uh, you will be able to find this particular content in some other chapter number. The content remains the same, the chapter number changes. So, you do not have to spend more money in getting the 10th edition. Okay, you will be able to find it in any other edition. Of course, partition functions you can find in many other standard textbooks of statistical mechanics or even online. Okay. So, we will uh, recap something very old. Uh, much ago, 10 modules ago, uh, we derived something very fundamental that at uh, equilibrium the classical density matrix looks like uh, 1 over n into e to the power of minus beta h and my n which is the normalization constant we showed is equal to this. Okay. Uh, you can go back to this module where we derived did this uh, partial derivation in phase space. Uh, we will build over it right now. So, the point is first thing we note what is the units of n? Well, it is uh, we see that this thing is dimensionless, it is an exponential. So, the units of n is the same unit as q into p. Okay. Uh, what is the dimension of uh, 1 q into 1 p? That is equal to q is a uh, unit of length. So, in uh, SI units it is meter, P is momentum which is kilogram meter per second which is kilogram meter square per second. Uh, does this unit remind you of any fundamental constant of nature? 
it should strike you something that is related to kilogram meter per square per second. Uh, if you guessed h or h bar you are exactly right. This is the same units of h the Planck's constant. Okay. So, uh, q dot p this is 3 n q dot p. Okay. So, q is a 3 n dimensional vector where n is the number of particles. So, this thing is the same units as h to the power of 3 n. Each q dot p gives me 1 h, I have 3 n q dot p, so I get h to the power of 3 n. So, the first thing we do actually is to define a partition function q which is dimensionless. So, we take this n and divide by h to the power of 3 n. Okay, so, this thing is uh, dimensionless. Okay. Uh, so, we start with this partition function and what we do is uh, this by itself is very large, very, very complex to calculate. This is a 3, 6 n dimensional integral. I have 3 n q's, I have 3 n p's. I do not want to do this integral, I do not know how to do this integral. We will simplify our life. What we do is we note one important uh, property of the Hamiltonian. This uh, to a good approximation for most problems can be separated into Hamiltonian of translation plus Hamiltonian of uh, rotation plus Hamiltonian of vibration. Okay. Uh, once we bring in quantum mechanics, we will also have an electronic part, but that I am not writing right now. Uh, so, this is an approximation, this is not always separable. Uh, translational part can always be separated, but uh, rotation and vibration in principle can be mixed, but we will make this simplification for now for this course. Okay. Uh, how do we make this simplification? Let us say uh, we will have to provide one more thing. The q comma p, these are 6 n variables. This itself is partitioned into translational, which is nothing but center of mass. So, uh, these are 3 coordinates, 3, vari three, uh, 3 into 2, 6 variables. So, the entire center of mass of the my molecule, okay. so x, y, z of center of mass and uh, p, x, p, y, p, z of my center of mass. Uh, plus, I have uh, also coordinates and momenta describing rotation. So, that tells me how the molecule is oriented and what is the angular momentum of my molecule, of the overall molecule, okay, how it is rotating around. So, I have q rotation, comma p rotation. Uh, so, this is a slightly more complex. For linear molecule, there are only two rotations possible, we will discuss this in a moment. Uh, so, 2 into 2, 2 uh, angles and 2 corresponding angular momenta. So, 4 variables. For non-linear, we will discuss this in the next slide, please do not worry. We can have 3 possible rotations. And finally, we have q comma p of vibrations. Okay, so, not only do we separate out the Hamiltonian, we have also separated out our coordinates and momenta. We have coordinates describing translation, coordinates describing rotation and coordinates describing vibrations. Uh, so, again for linear, uh, you vibrations will essentially become 6 n minus 4. Remember the total has to be 6 n. I had 6 n variables here, I should have 6 n variables on the right. 6 uh, have been taken for uh, uh, translation. 4 for uh, rotation. So, I am sorry, my maths sh should become 6 and minus 10 for 
linear and for a non linear this will become 6 n minus uh, 6 plus 6 is 12 minus 12. Okay. So, I will have 6 n minus 10 vibrations vibrational degrees of freedom uh, for linear molecules and 6 n minus 12 for non linear. So, let us look at an example okay. things will become clearer. So, let us start with a very simple linear molecule H2. So, let me just draw x, y, z and let us say I have some H2 molecule oriented somewhere here. Okay. So, I have x1, y1, z1 of the first and x, x2, y2 and z, uh, z2 of the second hydrogen. Yeah. So, I have uh, 6 coordinates. which is basically x1, y1, z1, x2, y2, z2 and we transform this into 3 center of mass. So, we find a center of mass here, 3 center of mass coordinates. Now, this molecule can rotate in two ways, one is this rotation in plane, one in plane rotation. plus 1 out of plane rotation. So, for this molecule I have to tell you theta and pi essentially is what I am saying. You give me center of mass and you give me how the molecule is oriented in space which can be described by theta and phi. Right? So, for a linear molecule only 2 are enough. So, 1 is in plane rotation. And the other is imagine this H2 uh, coming out of plane like this. So, it is a hard thing to draw, but uh, you can imagine something like this and this H is going under the plane, something like this. So, the whole thing is rotating around like this. Okay. And plus I have one vibration, H2 can have only one vibration which is uh, this length, uh, let me call this X. So, you see I have a total of 6, 3 center of mass, 2 rotation, 1 vibration. Let us look at a slightly more complex example which is non-linear. Uh, let us look at water. So, I have some orientation of water sitting here. Again I have x, y, z. So, uh, now I have 9 total coordinates x1, y1, z1 of uh, hydrogen x1 y1 z1 of the second hydrogen x2 y x3 y3 z3 of the oxygen. So, again I will always get 3 uh, center of mass. So, wherever the center of mass lies plus this time I will have 3 rotations. Why? Because you also have to describe how the water itself is oriented. So, theta and phi tells me the overall structure, but beyond that as well the molecule has internal structure. So, I can have uh, one more degree of freedom, more physically uh, essentially you have one in, in, one in plane and two out of plane. So, uh, I can rotate the whole molecule in this manner. But I can also rotate the whole molecule in this manner. So, one is in the plane, one is out of the plane like this and I can also rotate it like this. So, I have three possible rotations. For H2 this was not possible because your H2 is rotating around the one axis. It is yeah, so it that does not rotate at all. So, that is the issue and I have three vibrations. So, for water I can have this stretch x1, I have this stretch x2 and finally I have the angle theta. Okay. So, I have 3 vibrations possible. So, the maths will always work out. Okay. So, we have separated the energy, 
let me just tell you a little bit more. So, the translational energy is essentially that of center of mass. Okay, so, this basically looks like momentum of center of mass square divided by 2 m where m is the sum of all masses. So, m is the sum of all atoms, sum of uh, sorry masses of all atoms. Okay. So, that is your translational energy just the kinetic energy of your center of mass. Uh, rotation gets a little bit more complex. So, I will not write the complex uh, descriptions here which is not necessary for this course. This essentially is the angular momentum which is like L square over 2i and finally is the vibration uh, which essentially looks like uh, harmonic oscillators. Okay. So, you have uh, something like a p square over 2 mu plus uh, half uh, mu r square something like that okay, where r is your vibrational degree of freedom. Okay. So, we have this separation of Hamiltonian whatever the Hamiltonians are let us not get into what the Hamiltonian are right away, but let us look at this structure and uh, let us put the separation of variable and the separation of Hamiltonian here. So, remember my q and p are now separated out. So, I will write integral of dq dp in terms of uh, q and p of uh, translational rotational uh, sorry and vibrational. and Hamiltonian also I am separating out. And then what we do is we this depends only on uh, center of mass and uh, this depends on this and this depends on this. So, I, I can write this as 1 over h cube dq center of mass dp center of mass e to the power of minus beta h translation uh, 1 over h square for linear and h cube for uh, non-linear you understand that now. Okay, does not matter. and finally vibrations. And depending on linear or non-linear I will have 1 over h to the power of 6 n minus uh, 5 sorry 3 n minus 5 or 3 n minus 6. Now, this should be d p vibe. So, we call this one q translational, we call this one q rotation whatever it is h cube or uh, h uh, square and this one we call q vibration. So, uh, in summary what we have done today is uh, we first looked into the introduction to transition state theory and what we realize is if we want to solve transition state theory we need to know a little bit about partition functions. So, we are going to cover that and to stu study partition functions we divide the partition function into three components translation, rotation, vibration. We separate our Hamiltonian into these three as well as our variables and finally, we derive a formula for uh, Q translation, rotation and vibration. A concrete expression for these uh, translation, vibration and rotation will be derived in the next module. Thank you.